Hello there guys, welcome back to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how exactly I'm going to fake in the ocean texturing using the displacement map. So to get started, let's go into our hypershade. So we're going to render editors hypershade. I'll load in the displacement material and as you can see we have the layered texture which is the one which is giving us all of these details of the landscape. And as you remember, all the values which are black are the ocean and all the white values are the ones which are giving the height. So the brighter the uh, uh, color values, the higher the peaks are. So I can directly make use of this layer texture to get in different colors for my landscape. So let's go ahead and try and do that. I'll go ahead and actually open the node editor so that I'll show you exactly how you can work here too so that you have much better understanding. So I'll load in these values in here. Okay, and let's make it larger. Okay, so what I have right now is basically the layer texture which has a ramp and the noise node combined together in here and these values are being converted to a simple black and white value We're using the RGB to HSV node. You can use another method which I'm going to show you now to do the same operation and that is using, that is basically driving the displacement on the object for now. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead Use the layer texture, the final one I have, the black and white object to uh, drive the color information in this material. So let's open up this material and here I'm going to load in this. So as you can see, we have the out color value here in the layer texture and we have an in color, va in color value here in the landscape material. So basically this in color value which is shown here. I'm going to connect the out color into the in color. So basically, I'm connecting it inside. So as soon as I do that, if I turn on my texturing in the viewport and just hardware texturing to make it look better, you should be able to see that we have black to white values just like the displacement map. Basically, it is the displacement map uh, shown in the viewport. Now, what I want to do is not just connect this layered texture into the color value, I actually want to change the colors where black is turned into blue and white is turned into something else which represents the actual mountains themselves. So to do this I need to connect a few nodes or do some changes before it goes into the color itself. So to do that let's bring in a couple of nodes. The first one I want to bring in is a luminance node. Okay, so this is a very simple node. Uh, it, what it basically does is it, it takes uh, RGB value and it converts it into black and white. So it takes R, G and B, averages them and gives you a single value output, 0 to 1 or whatever you have. So it's basically a black and white converter, same as what we had done here. So now what I want to do is take the out color and plug that in to the input value here. So it's going to take in whatever colors are coming in from here average them out and give me only black and white values. Now, once I have these black and white values, I can't just connect them back into color because it's nothing but black and white still. What I want to do is go ahead and change them. I want to remap all of these values. I want to remap black and white. To do that, I'll bring in a remap. Remap value. Uh, let's hit enter. So remap value, what it helps us do is you give it a single input which is either 0 to 1 value, a single channel input and you can either change the value itself or you can give it a different color depending on the input value. So this is the output color or the color variation which I'm going to try and affect and get different textures. So let's do that. I'll select both of these nodes. Let's load them up completely and I want to go ahead use the out value as the input value here and the output color here goes into the color of my material. So basically what I've done effectively is instead of connecting it directly into my landscape material I'm first converting it to black and white. I'm going to change the black and white into some color information and then it goes back into my material. So if I come back into my viewport you can see absolutely nothing has changed yet but if I go to my remap value now and start changing some values like let's say I take this black and I give it some value like let's say blue you should be able to see that immediately the entire ocean is blue in color. So how exactly does this work? Now to begin with 
what we have is a simple black to white gradient. Black is what is applied to anything which is completely black in the input value. So that means all the blacks get black again. And one is what is going to be applied here at the end. So basically, if you select it, the selected position is what you're applying the value to. Now, I want all the zeros to be perfectly blue or the ocean colored. So I'll go ahead, select this value, which is the selected position zero. I'll go ahead, give it, uh, let's say, a Caribbean blue kind of tint. And then I'm going to create a new stopper and I'm going to set this to very close as possible to zero. So let's say 0 0.5, 0.005. And here I'm going to give it a slightly grayish tone, basically something which resembles sand uh, so that I have something which uh, looks like as if uh, it's transitioning into land. Now, once I have that, okay. I want to go ahead and change that into rocks. So first I have my ocean and then I have my sand and now I want my rocks. So let's go ahead, give it uh, something like dark gray. Okay, it's a bit too close. So I'll just move it a bit far off. Also you have different transition values here. So as you can see, if I select this, it has linear. I'll go change it to spline so it gives me better results or you can change it to smooth so it gives you smoother transitions up to you. Choose whatever looks best. So I'm going to choose another spline here. So as you can see what ha what is happening here, all the ocean, all the flat area has a blue tinge. All the sandy areas or the transition area now has the sandy color and all of the mountains have the actual shading, uh, the black to white shading. Now another thing to note here is that uh, specific areas where we have used soft mod, especially this area here, which is giving you the sand on top. This is happening because it's not the texture which is being, uh, which is pulling out the landscape in this area. It's actually the soft mod. So therefore texturing is not going to affect uh, the height value inside here. So it's uh, something which you have to take care of if you want to make sure you have absolute control, whereas which I don't really care about right now, so I don't mind. So let me change these values here, just so it gives me something which I want. Okay, so I'm satisfied with that. I just need the rocks to be a bit more dark in color. I'll do that and I'll change the peaks to be a bit darker. Okay, so as you can see, I have an ocean, I have a island inside it and the texturing is done. Now. Whatever I have done in the node graph is very simple. I've just used the displacement material to get the ocean texture. There's a very simple method. I'm going to go ahead in the next couple of videos, show you an advanced method, which is going to dwell a little bit more into node graphs and a couple of more nodes. So I'll see you in the next one where I give in more details into the ocean.